it's quite striking that those same commentators who talking about Russian drone attacks on Ukraine said, well, that would simply strengthen civilian morale and anger at uh, Russia. I suspect the consequence of Ukrainian drone attacks on Russia is likely to be exactly the same. They will actually rather strengthen um, Russian popular opinion, which is already very supportive of Putin, hard to understand, but true, um, will, will further strengthen that position. In terms of the drone attacks inside Russia, obviously Moscow, Moscow has accused Kyiv of being behind the attacks, and uh, the White House has come out saying, we do not support attacks inside Russia, that's it, period. If drone attacks continue into Russia, even if we don't have confirmation as to where they're coming from, what are the implications for the U.S. and its involvement of the war? Does it sort of put them in a corner? Yeah, I mean, the U.S., actually the Ukrainian government too, doesn't have the action of the Ukrainian armed forces and Ukrainian intelligence entirely under control. And I imagine that what's going on in Kiev at the moment is that Zelensky is saying to whoever launched these attacks, kindly calm down because you threaten our relations with the United States. I think this will probably go on intermittently because actually the Ukrainian intelligence uh, agencies have been rather effective in what they've done to Russia. Um, but you, you, Kiev will be able to claim, as it talks to America about this, that we're doing our best, but actually we can't control these things. What does an escalation look like at this point from the Russian side? Well, the Russians certainly don't want to get into a war with the United States, with NATO. Um, they, they are waiting. The, the big moment that's coming up, everybody says, is an upcoming big Ukrainian counteroffensive. And they're kind of hunkered down waiting for that counteroffensive to come at, with the firm intention of rebuffing it if they can. And the real turning point in this war may well be that counteroffensive and how well it succeeds. If it does succeed, then we're in a new area where the pressure is on Russia, maybe to get rid of Putin, maybe to retreat, maybe to lose large areas of territory, but and then to begin to look for negotiated settlement. If they block the counteroffensive, which is what they're actively planning to do, then we're in a complete stalemate and at that point, the pressure will come on both sides to begin to talk. Well, overnight, the Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Medvedev, uh, so the former, uh, the former um, Prime Minister, said that Britain was Russia's eternal enemy and that any British officials who facilitated the war in Ukraine could be also considered legitimate military targets. Uh, this really sounds like an inflammatory comment. I, I just wonder, wearing your diplomatic hat, how you, to interpret those, how you would read them. Yeah, it is pretty inflammatory, but Medvedev, whom, when I knew him, when I was ambassador in Moscow, was quite a good, calm, reasonable, sensible guy, seems to have gone completely off the wall in the course of this uh, conflict and says all sorts of wild things, which it's a mistake to take too seriously. We in the UK have been very tough on Ukraine, probably among the toughest on the Western side, and you would expect this sort of rhetoric. Um, I don't think that Medvedev actually speaks for the Russian government should we get into serious discussions. Sir, are there any signs that popular support for the war within Russia is waning? No, no, it's a short answer. I mean, there are signs that the support is pretty soft, and if things go catastrophically wrong on the battlefield or economically, then it could weaken, and indeed the elite could turn against Putin. But for the moment, as I say, they're all hunkered down. I don't know how confident they are. I think if the Ukrainians offered a a deal tomorrow, essentially on the existing lines, the Russians would probably accept it. But um, for the moment, they're hunkered down and are pretty confident that they can get into the stalemate situation, which will then lead to talks. And you need to remember about Russia, one quite important fact about Russia, is that when it's under external pressure, its people tend to rally around its president, rally around its czar, whoever it is. That's what happened in 1941 when Hitler attacked. That's what happened in 1812 when Napoleon attacked. And in a sense, the tougher things get for Russia, as long as they don't get too tough, the, the, the more, the firmer, I think, popular support for Putin is likely to remain. Hi, I'm Giovanna Bersecchi, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.